Well, we want to talk about food now, and we're at the night markets, of course, so actually, if you come and have a look at this, we've got some beautiful food that's been cooking, and this is one of the most popular stands here, but I actually want to talk to you about fresh food. I want to talk to you about the food, where it comes from, from the trees and from the plants, and before that, from the seeds. Now, if your nana reckons that fruit and veggie don't taste as good now as they used to when she was a little one, she's actually probably got a point. Uh, veggies now are bred for shelf life, so supermarkets like the ones that'll last for a long time without going mouldy, they're not bred for taste, but there are a group of New Zealanders who are determined to keep those old veggies alive before they disappear for good. And Michael Holland went to Wairoa to meet them and catch up with what they're up to. Bread. Bread for lunch. It's as simple. It's a really great place to live. It's a great place for the seeds. As down to earth as it gets. Looking at your hands, <laughs> I can see how deeply rooted in the soil your passion is. I know, I meant to clean my nails this morning, but I, it's hard to clean them. <laughs> Kay Baxter, the guardian, the keeper of some of our most important heritage, vegetable and fruit stocks. Her sprawling seed gardens, a living library, a veritable Noah's Ark of the foods of our forebears. These seeds are our past and they're our future and it's our responsibility and our job to pass these to the next generation. The Kawanga Institute nurturing the seeds of some 800 edibles. Odom yellow meated watermelon, Suter's watermelon, salad pea, Southland heirloom. Each with its own story to tell. Port Albert up by Wellsford. These the cucumber seeds brought by immigrants known as the Albertlanders, some of them German in the 1860s. They're kind of torpedo shaped, about that long, with a yellow skin and they never go bitter, they're all, they're just really good cucumbers. Of course, the mother seed garden, everything in here has been grown for seed. This better be worth it Kay, I've got my city shoes on, I'm a precious boy. <laughs> I think you need some gumbies. <laughs> They're leeks, it's leek seed, it's an old um, leek called Leon. We've been roguing them, taking out the weak ones, saving the best ones so that we end up with seed from a really strong bunch of leek plants. Cyclanthera, Delicata pumpkins, Blue Hubbard pumpkins, they're amazing. These are the genetics of a yep. century or so ago. Yeah. Convinced of that? Totally. And most importantly, with these genetics, she says, comes the nutritional value of yesteryear. What we're seeing now is that mainstream is wanting this. Like, there's so much science out there now to show how important nutrition is, and there's so much science to show that modern food doesn't contain it. The Institute's work and organic status, though, potentially under threat from a proposal to spray and plant forestry on neighbouring land, which acts as its water catchment. The land's been offered to the Seed Saving Charitable Trust, but not surprisingly, money's an issue. We need a million dollars to buy that block and this block so we have secure land to, to continue to grow these seeds on. Purple sprouting broccoli, which is an ancient form of broccoli, when it's dry we take it in, put it on a big tarp on the ground and dance on them and all the seeds drop out. Dance on them. Dance on them. Mm. Come on, let's see your style. And get the music out, get the drums out and all the seed falls out. <laughs> It's a globe artichoke. An artichoke. Surely you've eaten a globe artichoke. <laughs> and you're going to dance on those as well? No, they're too prickly. Too prickly. <laughs> <laughs> These are the peas that would have come with our great grandparents, great great grandparents that came out on the boats. Eating peas today have all got white flowers, but all the old ones have got coloured flowers. No one's played around with them, no one's hybridised them or genetically engineered them or processed them in any way. I'm really hopeful that. Um, more and more people will bring them back into their lives again. So if you can turn a mug like me, you're on the right path. Maybe. <laughs>